Glass of wine, editing time. Welcome back everybody, my name is Philip and today it is time for another start to finish editing tutorial. Today we are going to work on an image that I took in Rome recently and this one is next to the Villa Borghese, or whatever way you pronounce it. And we're going to do everything from one click sky swapping, to color and contrast adjustments, to cropping, let's just go, let's just jump right in. Okay, here we are in Photoshop and the image looks rather meh. So let's get going. First I hit Command or Control if you're on a Windows PC and J to make a copy of my background layer. I always do that so in case I mess up I always have my you know original layer to fall back onto. Once done I'm gonna hit Command or Control T to transform. I'll zoom out a little bit, I go towards the bottom and grab one of these bottom anchor, anchor points here. I grab it, hold the command or control key and just, you know, pull it down. What I want to do is I want to get rid of some of the foreground because it was simply not very interesting. Now it's going to look like you're going to stretch the image and you are, but trust me, nobody's going to notice. Make sure you are straight and then once you're done, hit the enter key. Cool, that really brings the focus onto the, the back part of the image, so to speak. Now that that's done, let's get onto the sky. For a one quick, super fast Photoshop sky replacement, head over to edit and go down to sky replacement. Don't worry, it's super easy. On this little drop down here next to this preview sky, well hit it and pick a category that you like. You can also hit the little gear button here on top and click on get more skies and simply go to download free skies, which means you're gonna get like three or four of these, these sky packs. They are free, you might as well use them. Otherwise, you can always go to websites like pexels.com and simply hit in the skies and you're gonna get skies that actually have no copyright. So back in Photoshop, make sure you pick a sky that fits the scene at least more or less and simply select it and click back into the whole, you know, dialogue here. You can then adjust how bright the sky has to be and what temperature it has to have so you can make it more sunsetty or yellowy or you can make it more cold. I'm just gonna leave it where it was. At the lower part of the dialogue, you can simply adjust the foreground. So if you want the foreground to be a little bit less dark or brighter, you can play around with this particular slider. I'm just going to drag it somewhat to the right, just to give it a bit more darkness where the edge is. With the color slider, you can change the sort of color feel of the foreground. So pick one that makes sense to you and that fits your photo. And once you're done, hit the OK button. Now, as you can see, Photoshop will create a folder for you where it has all the work done for the sky replacement. If you wanted to, you can go in and adjust things, but you know, you can also just close the folder and keep on moving forward. For my image, I'm going to grab a curve adjustment layer next and I'm going to create a slight contrast adjustment or contrast enhancement, one would say, by creating a slight S curve. So I'm going to drag it down towards the bottom half and up so that I get a slight S. That's going to give the whole image a bit more contrast. And as such, it's going to make the image pop a little bit already much more as we can see. Next up, I'm going to grab a hue saturation adjustment layer. So I'm just going to click on that layer and increase my saturation. I'm going to increase it quite a lot so it's going to look like it's far too much, but just bear with me. Now with that same adjustment layer, I'm going to change the color feel to my image a little bit. First, I'm going to swap from master down to the blues. Now I have control over the blue. So I can say, do I want to take out some blue of my image? And I actually do. So I'm just going to decrease the saturation of my blues. So if you look at the sky, for instance, you'll notice it'll become black and white if I move that slider all the way down. Now, of course, I don't want to move it all the way down, but I want to move it down a little bit to maybe something like here. Similarly, I want to take out some of the yellows. So I'm going to go to the yellow sort of section and I'm just going to decrease my yellows. Now, again, if I go to the very bottom, all the yellows become black and white. I don't want that, so I'm just going to go down a little bit. The important part is that at least I go to my reds because I want to increase my reds a little bit in the image. I want to really give this image a sort of red feel, especially with all these buildings. Maybe something like that. Let's have a look at the before and the after. I don't know if you can see that on the monitor, but the color feel of the image has changed a little bit in the sense that, you know, it's just more red dominant than it was before. In the next step, I want to create a vignette, which means simply a darker outline around the edge of that image and then possibly a sort of light enhancement or a brighter spot in the center. You could do that manually, but I am always a lazy man. So I'm going to hit the command, option, shift and E key on my keyboard, which is going to create a new layer. Everything that I can see right now will be put on a new layer, which is called a stamp visible. If you're on a Windows PC, of course, do not use the command key, use the control key instead. With that layer selected, I'm going to head to the top to my filters and then go down to the camera raw filter. The camera raw filter makes it very easy because I can simply scroll down to effects and here I have my vignetting. So I'm simply going to drag that slider towards the left. If I drag it to the right, everything is going to become white at the edge. I want the darkness. 
So let's hit it maybe something like that. Increase the feathering so that the edge is not as dominant. And then play around with your slider, of course, in your photo to, you know, figure out a level of vignetting that you feel comfortable with. I'm not worried about the sky because I'm not going to put it there. I'll show you in a second. Once you found the spot, hit the OK button. Cool. Now, unfortunately, this also darkened my sky, which I don't like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a layer mask on that layer by hitting the layer mask symbol at the bottom right here. I'm going to hit the B for barbecue key on my keyboard, which brings up my brush. I can now make the brush nice and large. And with a black foreground color, see how it's black selected here in the left hand side? With a black foreground color, I can now decide where I want to hide the effect that we have just created. I like to do this step by step, so I'm going to choose an opacity of 30%. I'm just going to start clicking away this particular darkness that we have created in the sky. Cool, if we switch it on or off, we can see that we have the vignetting only towards the bottom of the image, which is perfect. Now, I don't like that dark corner in the top right here of that sky, so I'm simply going to grab a curve adjustment layer. I'm going to take that curve and bring it upwards ever so slightly to maybe something like that. Close that off. Hit the Command or Control on the Windows and I key for Idaho, which will invert the layer mask and therefore hide that particular layer. Once that layer is hidden, just like before, but this time with a white brush, so I'm going to use white as my foreground color, I can now choose where do I want to make this increase or that sort of curve increase visible. Not curve increase, brightness increase. So I'm going to just tap away ever so slightly at the top here. And once I have painted that one in, I can even go back to my curve and decide how bright I really want to make it. I think I'm okay with something like that, just so that this particular corner is not so dark. We're nearly there. We're just going to have one more curve adjustment layer and then one more other thing. But in that curve adjustment layer, I'm going to go from RGB to the red channel first because I feel the image has a certain, certain red color tone to it, which is good for the buildings, but I don't want it anywhere else. So I'm just going to grab that red curve just like with the hue saturation layer before. But this time I'm going to decrease the reds ever so slightly in my image, maybe to something like this. This will bring out the greens a little bit, so I'm going to go in and bring down the greens as well. Ever so slightly, not so much, just a little bit. Once more, this is a subtle change, and I don't know if you can see that on your screen, but it just takes that temperature, that heat out of the image just a little bit. As the second last step, I'm going to go back to the normal, normal, normal curve, I guess, and just make it brighter and just a little bit again to something like that. And as a last step, we're going to do one more stamp visible. So we're going to hit Command or Control, Option, Shift and E on the keyboard, which will, you know, put everything that you can see on the current screen on one particular layer that I have now down here. With that, I'm going to go down to Filter or up to Filter and I'm going to go to the Camera Raw Filter once more. Why? Because within the basic function, we have the Clarity Slider and I love the Clarity Slider for city images. Mm hmm. So if I drag that to the right, the image is going to become crisp as mad, right? And we're going to have to enjoy that with care, but simply make it to a point where you feel comfortable. And don't worry about the sky or that there are areas where you don't want to have it in because you don't have to put it in there. And again, I'll show you in a second. But for me, I'm going to go maybe with something like that. Once I'm done, hit the OK button. And just like before, because I don't want to have this effect everywhere, I'm going to drop a layer mask on it. Invert that layer mask with Command or Control and I on the keyboard. And now with a white brush, I can paint that effect in on that layer that is currently hidden or from that layer that is currently hidden onto my image. So I'm just going to bring that here into the center of my image ever so slightly with light tabby tabbies. And that's just going to create a little bit of, well, let's call it artificial sharpness because we didn't actually sharpen anything, but it's, it's some sort of a micro contrast if you want that just simply looks cool. And we can see that in the before and the after, if we zoom in a little bit, especially at that center part right here, that is the before and the after and the before and the after. So you see it's just a bit more contrasty right there with a single slider, which I like a lot. And there we go. Within a couple of minutes, we went from uh, to oh yeah. Now in my original editing, I used a different sky. Don't ask me where it is. Maybe I took it from a different software. I can't even remember. This one doesn't fit my image perfectly because as you can see the background here with the trees doesn't fit beautifully or fade beautifully into the sky. So make sure as I said at the beginning, choose a sky you know, that fits perfectly, but you get the idea. I would like to point out that I nearly died for this picture because it was about 35 degrees Celsius and I was literally melting away. But look at it and tell me that it does not remind you on the Assassin's Creed games. Just, just look at it and tell me that I dare you.
Anyway, I hope you did like the video. If you did like the video, do not forget to hit the thumbs up button. And also, if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. It's going to help me out a lot. Until next time, have a good one. Bye.